All right. Welcome to the Optimized Man Japan podcast. Number one, my name is Bodhi Kenyon in beautiful Tokyo, Japan. As you can see in the background, the curtain.、Um, I'm happy to be here with good friend Max Hernandez, Hernandez from Chicago,、yes, Illinois, without an S. It's an Illinois, not an Illinois, right? <laughs> That's、um, right. Yeah, Chicago is a windy city, very dear to me from Detroit, Michigan. So it's not far from where I'm from originally.、Um, and I found out that the Illinois actually comes from、uh, Native American language, meaning、uh, best people. Did you、mm-hmm. know that? <laughs> I looked、no. it up, looked up the <laughs> etymology of <laughs> Illinois. So well, Paul would be proud of you. Right? He would.、Mm. So here's Max Hernandez and Bodhi Kenyon. Discussing health optimization for all the men in Japan and beyond. Welcome, Max. Is there anything better to、right? discuss than health? I don't、right? know. Thank you. Thank you for、uh, the amazing introduction. And <laughs> I'm, I'm super glad to be here. So happy to、Thanks. have you. All right. So your, your message is freedom, as far as I can see. Um, what is freedom to Max? It's funny because I don't really know. <laughs> okay. Like、uh, when, I, when I decided to start creating content, that name just came to me after maybe two months. And I started making content on you know, personal development, health, what to eat. And then Max Freedom just like popped in my head. It must have been like in the middle of the night. What does this mean? But I ran it by a couple people. They're like, that's a good name. Like, you can, you can really go with that because it's, it's very broad and you don't really have to know what it means. You're going to kind of figure it out as you go. So I almost think of it as Max Freedom is not only my journey of getting to freedom,、mm. but it's also my journey of helping people maximize their own freedom.、Awesome. So it has, it's almost like ATG. It has the, The double meaning. But yeah, as a kid, I'm only 22. I don't think I have the life experience or wisdom to give you a definition of what freedom means. I won't be that naive, but I can speak on certain experiences. And I've come up with this metaphor that I think relates to many different freedoms in our lives. And it is. Slavery. So, Keegan often says that when you take things to the extremes, the truth becomes more clear. There's no other case of a lack of human freedom worse than slavery. So, when you think about slavery, what's actually happening there? Like, there's the slave and there's the master. So, the slave answers to the master, the master tells the slave what to do. And it's that kind of relationship where the slave really has no control at all. And even if they could do anything, they just they wouldn't do it. And I felt like this in many different moments in my life. I'll give you an example. Maybe about like three and a half years ago, I started vaping. So、mm. smoking the e cigarette stuff. And I did it for about two and a half years. Even when I was. Going in a health journey. I would be going to the gym and I would get I would get done with the gym and I'd still smoke. Like it、wow. didn't make any sense.、Yeah. But I started to realize that the vape was my master.、Mm-hmm. I was a slave to it. Like if I if I would use it an hour later, I had to come back to it.、Nah. So I started to realize that it had that control over me. And when, it, when I put it in that framework of I'm a slave, I was like, I can't be a slave anymore. So it was, it was this really cool metaphor where I realized, like, I don't want to be this person. And you can apply that to literally anything your diet, your relationships, whatever. Where are you lacking freedom and what has control over you? That's awesome. Yeah, that's a big one, right? I mean, 
we don't think of ourselves as slaves. I mean, we really think, I mean, you're from the land, home of the brave and the land of the free, right? Land of the, mm-hmm. yeah, one of those. <laughs> I've been removed from the. I can't even long. tell you the quote. <laughs> <laughs> I slept through U.S. history. So. Oh, okay, okay. It's in our national anthem, right? <laughs> the land <laughs> of the free. Yep. Um, yeah, and that's something very near and dear to Americans' hearts, right? Slavery, because that was, that's not, don't go very far back into American history and it's right there and it's, it comes up every day in media, right? Black Lives Matter. And I mean, this, this is all, this is stuff that's pretty close it's to us. Fresh. It's fresh. It's fresh and it's gone on through, I mean, tens of thousands of years in history. Slavery was just a way of, that's the way people worked forever. Um, yeah. So, all right. So let's let's um let's talk about health. So, being a slave to maybe um, the medical system or mm. food. I mean, being a slave to our desires because these big mm. companies know how to put us into slavery, if we want to put it in, in those terms. Um, so let's talk about freedom in regards to health and diet. This is a huge one. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. And to your point about medicine and things like that. Yeah. Like if you're taking pills, you're, I mean, that's not something I aspire to, to be hooked right. on because I don't think our ancestors had pills. <laughs> uh, that's right. In terms of diet, and freedom there's a lot of things first of all when you i guess i could just dive into what i'm doing sure. which is i've been on the carnivore diet for about three and a half months okay lots of beef sardines salmon i'm even doing the organ meats so i'm eating liver every day uh, just a little bit and then i do heart kidney if myself five months ago was listening to this podcast, I would have thought that this wasn't even me talking because it seems crazy. Mm. I eat tallow, um, which is animal fat, beef suet, which is more animal fat, just a different type of fat. And I've had a lot of success with it. Like I, I'm at the point where now I can recommend it to people because I've experienced that it works. I've mm-hmm. been able to pack on like a decent chunk of muscle, more muscle than I've ever gained in my life this fast. Wow. Three and a half months. Like right. I, I'm, I think I'm 12 or 13 pounds heavier than I was three and a half months ago. Wow. It's like five kilos. And that kilos. has a lot to do with, uh, go ahead. That's about five kilos where, you know, Americans are. Oh, kilos. Assistant. Yes. It's okay. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, we're a bit different over here. So I've had a lot of success with it, and I think it gives me a lot of freedoms. I used to, I guess in the diet terms itself, like I don't count calories. I eat. That's freedom. You know, that's so much freedom. I used to calculate every meal on my fitness pal. Am I getting 350 <laughs> car- carbs in today? Am I getting this in? And like it was lit- that's slavery. You yeah. know, it's okay. You can do it if you want, but like, I would rather not. Yeah, that's another, that's... Uh, I guess another freedom would be hmm, like satiation. So I don't know if you even know if that's a word, but yeah. eating, satiety, eating till yeah. you're full. Yeah. Satiety. Mm. I eat when I'm hungry and then I don't eat and I don't think about food and I'm free. I can go work on what I'm right. working, I can go write, I can go read, right. and then I can come back later and eat. That's freedom. Awesome. And time. The, mm. the amount of times that like, if you're a body, if you're in the, on a typical bodybuilder, you know, you six yeah. or even four meals a day. So how many, how many meals are you eating per day in general? Two meals. Right. Uh, yeah. I about, used to eat three. I used to normally just do three. I never got into the five, six okay. meals, but I mean, that, that never appealed to me. 
and like time as far as like preparation like when you when you eat how long do you think it takes to to take the food out prep it eat it wash the dishes it's about 45 minutes okay so it's not super quick but it takes 10 minutes to cook yep. i gotta clean the cast iron skillet right it's not like and then there's always a lot of cleanup because beef is messy and just <laughs> grease everywhere and right i'm not living by myself so uh yeah 45 minutes but that's that's really very not that's not bad at all compared to what some people spend preparing meals even one meal right yeah especially the sort of typical bro that's you know trying to pack on the size like um there's a lot of prep right. involved with that yeah i mean of, of course you can throw protein shakes together in that that world um which doesn't take time but that nutrient i mean nutrient wise it's not a smart thing to do all the time um but like measuring like you're saying tracking measuring that is i did that for a long time and man i'm glad that that's slavery to me a, and the slave to my obsession of you know getting each each grain right you know not everyone does this but i i know i have so, several clients as well that that sort of get obsessive and it's like let's step back a grain of rice isn't gonna throw you over and make you fat you know mm. you have to measure that um so well it's interesting because like at the start i actually do think people should take some measurements mm. maybe sure. like i think it could help i that's that's what i did at the start i calculated okay what do i think my maintenance calories are and then i figure out roughly how much am i going to be need need to be eating and then i just i did it for the first couple of days and then after that my body knew and felt it and then i can just be more free with it i hear you um what i found and i've got a i met i've educated myself in this for seven years or so so i have an idea before i started this carnivore diet so i'm doing the carnivore diet as well which max is talking about um i'm having a challenge i'm only actually two weeks in at this point a little over two weeks in strict carnivore mm -hmm. and just to to let you know what is carnivore there's there's no vegetables we don't eat any vegetables <laughs> believe it or not we don't eat a single vegetable no fruit um no sugar zero sugar it's basically um what max said it's it's mainly beef in this case organ meats um in japan it's harder to get organ meats but they can be found um suet what's the difference between suet and, and tallow can you explain that I believe I it is that suet is like the internal fat that okay. is surrounding like organs and things like that. Okay. And tallow would be the more like the visceral, like the outside fat. Okay. All right. Thank you. Cause I didn't know the difference. Um, do you do, f and you do fish, right? You actually add fish in. You said sardines in the beginning. Of I like sardines. I've been eating them like every day pretty much. Okay. Cause I think they're, um, what what is the so what's the thing that's in omega threes? No, the uh, the the harmful chemical that's in a lot of fish. Uh, mercury. Mercury. Yeah, mercury. Yeah. So they're very low in mercury, so you don't have to worry so much about them. Right. If you get good quality ones, and and then I'll eat sardine, uh, salmon about right. maybe once a week, twice a week. Okay. I don't I don't like to go too crazy because I've heard things about the mercury and that could be uh it could be a little dangerous to eat. You can't eat fish every day. Right. Okay. So you're pretty flexible. You're not just, you know, there's some people that are just like beef, beef, salt, and water. So you've got more, you eat chicken and things like this as well, or just, just no. beef and fish. Um, I think eventually I would love to incorporate a bunch of things like, yeah, I'm going to eat fruits one day. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll have sure. some vegetables too. Right. But, <gasps> <laughs> uh, but the more i learn about gut health and i don't know anything about it and i don't think most people really kn we don't really know anything about it yet right. but it makes sense to me that the damage that i've done to my gut whether it's my fault or society's fault i'll take full responsibility i did it hmm. that damage has been done and it's been going on for 21 years so it might take a little bit of a 
crazy looking approach to reverse that damage. So yeah, it might take some some harsh months of just eating beef and fat and things like that, but I wouldn't even really call them harsh months because I've never mm. enjoyed eating more than I more than I am right now. Mm. I, I look forward to my meals almost mm. every time. Like I look sometimes I get a steak that's like that's like my birthday. I feel so excited for it. And All right. but most of the time it's just beef and it's and it's, it's fine though. Like mm. my eggs it's not like I'm shoving food down my throat. Sure. If that makes sense. Totally. It's interesting, like, um, you, he just mentioned eggs. So um, there are a lot of different ways that people approach carnivore. I mean, some people eat everything, the chicken, fish, whatever. And what Max is talking about is the, the clearing the gut. I mean, use, eating ruminant animals, right? That's the best. That's the, the quickest way to um, things like leaky gut and different things that we're we're not experts in at all, but um, just getting the gut health in line gets everything else in line, the brain cells and everything, everything's connected. So um, mm -hmm. I forgot where I was going with that, but yeah. Oh, eggs, you brought in eggs. So um, I've noticed, and I'm, I'm only two weeks into the carnivore diet right now, but when I eat a lot of eggs, my stomach actually gets a bit upset. And it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I did just yolks the other day and it didn't. Last night I, I put in, I made like sort of an omelet um, and I had sort of a weird um, feeling in my stomach for a little while. So, and they talk about the egg whites actually being, having histamines or something in, in them as well. So mm -hmm. some people can't handle that. It's basically minimizing your diet down to the, the purest form of food, which is beef, beef fat, salt, organs, and water. No coffee, yeah. right? I mean, some people stay with the coffee Max, as far as I know, you're not drinking coffee, right? Nope. Okay, me neither. That was a hard drug to kick. Um, it's out. Just water, salt and water right here. My animal. There's nothing wrong with it. My animal jug. Yep. Um, so, mm. I think we're clear about the carnivore diet. So, it's basically meat, animal products. Um, so, that's zero almost zero carbs basically i mean you got some carbs in liver i think in eggs but they're really minimal um so it's a form of ketogenic diet i guess bone um, broth too a bone broth that's a. I just made some the other day i bought some bones and boiled it up and it's jelly it's like a gelatin right mm -hmm. when it's cold and i just eat the I actually just eat the gelatin instead of really? it up. yeah interesting um i've i had some issues actually with liquid when i was drinking liquid with meals that my i wouldn't digest very well so just just some uh background on that i i was a a raw food vegan for two years at a, at a point so i've tried a lot of different diets i've done a lot of different diets i didn't try them um after that i had a lot of issues with digestion so hmm. Two years of that you go to eat normal food and it's like oh somebody's stabbing your stomach you know and that's probably a good thing because there was probably some gut health um being fixed there or not um but yeah i tend to eat i like to eat solid foods at the same time for now anyway all right so that's good so you at some point you will eat fruit you will eat vegetables um of you're just kind of healing you're in a healing phase of the carnivore diet yeah and i have no idea how long it's going to be yeah I definitely can tell there's still there's still progress to be made and it may take an even more focused approach getting into blood tests and finding more about my specific problems because I know when when it comes to training like it took that specificity to understand myself to actually start making progress whereas if you're just trying to put like a blanket statement diet even if it is the carnivore diet, maybe there's still certain things that can make it easier, make it make it happen faster, things like that. Right. Um, how will you know? Is there a point where you'll know? I mean, blood tests, of course, if you get a blood test. Is there anything that, that's going to be that kind of master? Okay, I mastered this. I've, I've cleared this. How are you going to know? I still get like some gut, um, just like doesn't feel great like uh bowel movements things like that it's like i can tell it's just 
the body's still it's still healing it doesn't sure it's like i can tell the diet is working and i and i enjoy the diet but when i don't have any kind of gut issues and i just feel great all the time hmm. i think i'll i think i'll just have that internal understanding i've pretty much i think i've just developed my intuition over the past year or so just mm. being really disciplined with my habits and p- meditating and being self-aware things like that where i can just trust even like a thought if a thought would pop up and say mm. you're done like you're mm. you're good right. to go right i would trust it i hear you that's cool you can't always trust that but right know. In the initial stage of this diet, so I'm I'm like at week two, and I thought I had made some clearing. There are a lot of things that I'm noticing already, um, hmm. changes, especially in my movement and my the pain in my body has really diminished. Pretty, I mean, this is two weeks in, right? Yeah, a lot of mental emotional things also. How was how was your the intro when you started? Were you drinking coffee before? Please give us like a just a little yeah. first month. So. Or, I haven't, I committed to like doing no cheat meals, basically, like I think at the beginning of this year. So I was committed. You're my man. Yeah. You're my man. No cheat I, meals. I, I just I'm wrote not, something about that. <laughs> you, like, I don't think you have to do that, but like I'm the kind of guy where I, my, my life is actually going to be better when I do it. So I'm not going to recommend it to anybody, but my quality of life is higher when I do it. But I was, I was doing that and I was in a lot of pain and my training wasn't going well and my emotions were out of whack and my thoughts were negative and what i was doing was i was eating some chicken some beef sometimes and then most of my protein was a protein shake whey protein Uh, i had the same protein shake every day for probably like a good year it was oats chia seeds uh, almond milk cinnamon uh yeah uh banana blueberries and whey protein Mm. and like and some spinach too throwing (laughs) as make that as green as i possibly could right Right. so and i i was like i'm doing everything right so (laughs) that's what google told me to do that's what other (laughs) health experts told me to do right now coming around i think it was maybe may or june Probably June. So I had been in, in ATG coaches for a good three months, stuck in this plateau of regressions, losing weight. I mean, I dropped from 160 to 150 in like six months. Mm. My emotions were just like, like I said, brutal. And I was so confused. And like, I brought it up to the coaches on a live call at some point. I'm like, I'm really struggling. Like, I can't even pull a sled without weight. I can't do ROKP. It mm. hurts too bad. I can't walk backwards without pain. These movements that they're saying are fundamental that everybody should be able to do. I can't even do them. I'm trying mm. to be a coach. It was this really, really tough emotional state for me. And then the, one of the coaches just wrote, what's your diet like in the comments? And then I explained what I just told you. And they're like, I think it was Keegan that sent a little message. <laughs> and he said, it would be. He said, uh, grains and seeds can be troublesome for certain people. He didn't say do the carnivore diet. Awesome. He said, maybe, you know, that's, that is key. And he knows Mm -hmm. how to like, not put his, not push someone too hard into something, let them choose it. And then actually another ACG coach, Graham Tuttle, Mm -hmm. he was on that call and then he sent me an email and he sent me his nutrition program which was like this 30 page document. Like Mm -hmm. he was, it's a program that he sells, but it's, he sent it to me for free. And I just read, I devoured everything in it. I just followed exactly what he said. And it was basically carnivore. Like Mm. it it wasn't exactly do this, but it was carnivore. And so I started Mm. transitioning into it. Mm. And like I said, within three and a half months, I've put on a ton of weight. I've all, most of the pains that I've had are gone. Mm. there's i still have pains but like i now believe that i will one day be pain free whereas before i was just in the gutter thinking i'm a victim i'm never going to get out of this 
so I, I relate a lot with what you're saying about the emotions. I'm being run by positive emotions. I'm functioning on positive thinking. Surely sometimes there's a negative thought and a negative emotion. I'm not some like enlightened monk or something like that. Maybe one day I will be. But it's just, yeah, it's beautiful what you can do and what kind of training and muscle growth you can accomplish and mental health benefits. Mm just by getting your diet in place right and almost no one touches on that like almost no one touches on diet that you know i no. mean in my experience in the past um so that's that's awesome and i love how keegan 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 smith is just the amazing guy that both uh, max and i are working with he's our mentor mm -hmm. um and he has a way of presenting things like Max said, you know, not pushing it's the carnivore diet, which, which I might do. Like I might, you know, yeah. it's, yeah. um, but here, you know, look at, look at these things and think about it beside yourself. But, um, can you share, um, the initial, like the keto flu and this, like in the beginning, was it, did you have a hard time adjusting? So I slowly transitioned. So like Graham's program got me thinking that like I need to eat less carbs. So I moved mm. from like probably eating 250 carbs a day to like 100, still eating like sweet potatoes, yep. carrots, things like that. Uh, and, and then I don't know who it was that like got me to think about doing carnivore. I think I started reading Paul Saladino, Saladino's book. Right. And then I just went all in on the carnivore diet. And when I made that transition, honestly, I didn't get sick. I didn't get like flu symptoms. I mm. The only thing I noticed was like, I wasn't like, my bowel movements were way smaller, you know? Sure. Like I wasn't going three times a day. It was like one time and not a lot was coming out. So sure. that's, some, that's, a, that's an interesting thing that happens. And it's almost like, you're giving your body good food, so it's actually absorbing all of it. It's, right. It doesn't have to get rid of so much. Um, muscle and that was muscle. the only weird thing that happened. Hmm. Wow, so that's pretty easy compared to... Yeah, what I got lucky, people. I guess. Okay, yeah, I've, I mean, I've heard some people adapt, become fat adapted really quickly. Some people, it, it takes... I'm still, I, I mean, I'm two weeks in and I haven't trained. I've mentioned this before and previous conversation but yeah upper body like i just i'm doing all the atgs um so atg is the athletic truth group and you can see yeah. max's shirt there it says knees over toes at super training gym he just went to a, you know something i just mm, realized today mm, mm. that knees over toes doesn't actually make that much sense mm. because it, it was what, what happened was uh it's like knees knee uh what was it so I started thinking about knees over toes, which would be like knees over toes, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Like it's on top of the mm -hmm. toes. Mm. But that's not really what we're talking about. We're really talking mm. about knees in front of toes. In front of toes, right. <laughs> so Ben might have to change his name. I got the, I don't know if we can, yeah. But anyway, we're, we're both in this group. Uh, just amazing. It's the next level of training. Um, it's beyond the typical, I mean, it starts from the feet up. Um, I don't want to get too much into detail about it, but it's just, you know, I've been working with clients and doing a lot of single leg training, uh, squats, split squats, single leg squats, uh, skater squats and things. But this, this is the next level working on the tibialis, working on the feet, just my ankles. Like I, I had a, an ankle issue forever. And every time I would run it, would, I could feel it probably some strain or sprain somewhere in my past. It's, I don't feel it anymore. It's, it's just like, it's it's next level um i would like to stay on the carnivore diet a little bit more because it's just such a let's do it it's a deep uh such a deep topic and such a a huge lever for health and it's not just the carnivore diet but even just getting the the insulin down and um like max was saying even 100 grams of carbohydrates will change your life a day and mm -hmm. yeah um so a lot of approaches are doing that um i I transitioned. I was really doing like a, a high, just the exact opposite. It's basically the bodybuilder diet. Um, 
was like 450 grams of carbs per day. That's what I was eating in order to maintain. I, I pretty lean, I, I get ripped up pretty quickly. So carbs just kind of were my main fuel. Protein was a, about 100. I, I weigh about, I don't know what I weigh now, but, but 180 pounds normally. I, I lost quite a bit of weight on the carnivore so far. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, quite a bit. Um, but just like I went the, the extreme opposite. So like 450 grams of carbs per day doing the tracking, the slavery system, uh, slavery to the time in the gym. I was 90 minutes in the gym, six days a week. Um, okay. yeah, just, and I'm thinking, why am I doing this? Just so I can be bigger so that I can be cooler. What, what am I actually, who am I, who am I trying to prove this to? Right? It's like, my yeah. wife doesn't care if I'm thin or jacked <laughs> or whatever. She doesn't care. Um, my, my clients don't, don't necessarily care. So I was really thinking that through, but my fat was like at 55 grams a day. Protein is probably like around 200 and carbs are like 450. I switched to carnivore, just cold turkey it, um, cut the caffeine at the same time. And I'm in probably 14 days into it. Strict carnivore. Um, I even cut more or less cut dairy as well. I don't, I, I have a little bit of butter once in a while just to test it out. Grass fed butter but I don't, some days I don't have it at all. That's um, something that happened with me too. I oh, please share. started with the dairy mm. and I was getting into like the heavy cream, the whipping cream. It tastes and, good. Cause I, cause I was reading about bulking. I actually listened to Mark yeah. Bell talk about it. And he's like, if you're going to do carnivore and you want to bulk, you got to have dairy. Like it's going to be really hard to get enough food. So I, I, I took his advice, but it didn't work for me. And, and I, did, I did the same thing with the eggs too. I started realizing, oh, six eggs. It doesn't feel it's heavy. Good. It feels heavy, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I love the it. yolks work for me. So, mm. yeah. Maybe we're the um, same person, Max. You're just the younger version of me. Just by like two years. It's possible. We were born. I'm 24. Uh, <laughs> Don't mention my age. We were very talk close. It. Very close to each other in terms of birthplace, right? When's your birthday? May 19th. May 19th. I'm December 5th. Mm. Um, I'll have to look into that. Astrologic. My, my wife's really into astrology. So later on, I'll ask you about your mm. details. And okay. we'll, we'll see like a perfect fit, like like uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy. They like, have you ever seen that? Yeah. Because, yeah. So it's this guy fled the scene. This guy came yeah. to the scene or whatever. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, so you were the, talking about the carnivore and then yes. you brought up dairy. Yes. What, what else were you going to say? Um, I just wanted to, to give a level, the levels of everything, right? And and then there's like yes. the deepest level of carnivore, I guess, would be beef, water, and salt. And and people like Jordan Peterson are doing this. Um, I have a friend as well that, that does that because he has such, his body can't handle anything. So, um, I mean, any kind of food with histamines, like just has terrible issues with his gut. So um, basically meat, meat fat, uh, meat meaning beef, beef fat, salt and water. But um, yeah, so just talking about depth, you know, it doesn't have to be that crazy. No, you don't have um, to do the organs. You don't, right. You don't have to do all this, these other things and you can do beef and water, but I know some of the experts that talk about it say like that approach will, only get you for like a month or two and you're going right. to start running into health problems because you're nutrient right. deficient. Right. So you do have to think about the numbers of what your body needs, what minerals, what micronutrients, all that stuff. And I'm not an expert, but yeah, but you're doing it. You're doing the work three and a half months in hundred percent. No cheat meals. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> bravo max freedom. It all was right, actually, so, mm. uh, I was, I think I was messaging ben, ben in his like coaching messaging thing. Mm. And when I, when I was at that really low point back four months ago and he had, he had been talking about like how he does these no entertainment things um, and these no cheat meals. Yep. And I was like, that'd be something really cool to do. Mm. So when I was messaging, I was like, I just committed right then. It was in like April or May or something. I was like, I got to do this. Like I said, I'm going to be bulletproof until I'm bulletproof. No more cheat meals. 
Awesome. And I also did no entertainment. So I've been doing that for the last, I think it's been, I was looking at, I have a tracker. I think it's been 200 days. Wow. No movies, no TV. Nice. Wow. Uh, none of that stuff. And I'm way more focused and I'm getting stuff done. And it's it seems crazy, but it's, I'm trying to kind of mimic Ben's philosophy as much as I can. Mm. Because he's a massive role model for me. This is Ben Patrick. Yeah, he's the would you say the originator, the inventor of ATG, and he's the yeah he's the he's face the founder. He's the founder. Yeah, that's the word. So, bravo to to Ben Patrick too. Ben Patrick and Keegan Smith have brought Max and I together. So grateful for those guys. And Max, very grateful. Yeah. Is there anything else, anything we're missing on on Carnivore that that you'd like to share? Hmm. In regards to slavery well, and freedom, and I f I just feel better. Yeah. Like energy. Yep. And it's ketosis, I think. I don't know if it has to do with Carnivore necessarily, but I wake up and I get going. I yep. there's no lag. That has to do with no coffee too. Right. But surely. I get up and I go, yeah. and if I have a crash, it's not like a pizza crash. It's it's like three or four minutes. Maybe I do some meditation and then mm. I'm, I'm back up and I run till nine forty five and then I right. when I, it's time to go to bed, boom! I just fall asleep. Like, and that's awesome. Maybe that has a lot to do with other things I'm doing, but I think it, a lot of it has to do with ketosis and your body running on fat for fuel, your brain prefers fat as its fuel source, mm. prefers to run on ketones. So yeah, you're gonna have mental clarity like you've never had before. You're gonna be more willing to do things that are hard because this is hard. Mm. You look crazy to everybody <laughs> that you surround yourself with. Right. Your family will think you're nuts your friends will think you're nuts. So this isn't for the faint of heart, I don't think. It takes some guts and it takes some willingness to just trust that maybe this is true. And, you know, if you reach a certain point like I did where your health is just at the bottom of the barrel and you will be willing to try whatever it takes, maybe you have to get to that point to say, I'll do this. But there's guys like you that didn't get to that point and are just trying it because the more that you study, read up on it a little bit, it, it actually does make sense. And I'm not saying it's gospel. It's not dogma. There's way more things to learn. But why wouldn't you give it a try if it could mean better sleep, better mental clarity, better muscle growth, better fat loss, whatever you want, whatever your goals are. It seems like this diet is the best option you have for achieving them there's there's an enlightened man right there hmm. thank that, you that, that, that was awesome so. i'm gonna put that in the front of this video when people <laughs> that was, <laughs> I was really going good, off max. on a little rant. that was really yeah, good thanks. max your face thank is getting you. red like <laughs> i praised you and you got a bit embarrassed about it. yeah i think when i uh no i think that was just the, the blood flow to my brain yeah it was good <laughs> that was spot on um same what man today. Yeah. Well, I wanted to I wanted to um, expand on one thing you said about that. I woke up this morning. We had a seminar which happened in England, like seven seven p.m. England, which is four a.m. Japan time. I got up at three fifty, got on the call, and it's been mm. got on the call. After that it was a two hour call. Did a did a stretching session with my wife. Pop back in here. I'm on I'm on with Max, and it's just it's just the energy I'm running on fat, right? And fat's like an oil lamp. Whereas like carbohydrates would be like leaves, which is going to burn mm. stronger and longer, right? Um, it's different. And the freedom, like the freedom from being hungry, the freedom from hunger, from being dictated by hunger all the time. So just an amazing thing. Thank you, Max. That was, that was awesome. Um, <sighs> what else? What else do you want to We can talk about training, talk about mindset mind flex what floats your boat today we'll just we'll just play with it hmm. 
Mind fucks is a good topic. All right. What is mind flex? Goes along with this. People yeah. don't even know what that means. I'm sure. Mind so, flex. Mind flex. Let's. This is a topic <laughs> expressed by Keegan Smith. Originally right. thought of by Paul Council. Right. Don't know who he got it from. It could be his original thought. The idea is that you have been programmed to think that mind is set is the way to go every self-help book you've ever read always tells you mind set but the realization as we were hinting at earlier is that etymology is very important what do these words mean every intelligent person will tell you that the words you use matter so when you say mindset you're really communicating with your mind that your mind is set firmly in place, unwilling to move, unwilling to change, unwilling to adapt. When you use the word mind flex, you're telling your mind that you're, you are flexible. You're willing to adapt. You're willing to change. And most intelligent people will concur that flexibility and being able to adapt and change like that is really the key to success. So in terms of a scientific approach to it, it's about neuroplasticity and making new connections in your brain. We know that younger people, people around my age, even younger, I think it's up to the age of maybe 25, 26, we can make connections super rapidly. Like for example, my brain, I caused a lot of damage with the vaping. I don't know necessarily, there's no science to say that, but I can definitely tell you that I had some damage, I think I've been able to pretty much rewrite my brain, the structure of it, where maybe someone who's 40, who smoked cigarettes for 40 years, they can change their mind, but not in the same effect as I could. To that point, though, once you pass that certain age, you can still make connections. A lot of people graduate college get a job, and no longer learn. They might read two or three books the rest of their life, and it's just a recipe for disaster because your brain is everything, and if you're not learning your whole life, your brain's not staying fresh. It's not making these new connections. But if you do put yourself into situations where your brain is forced to adapt, figure out how do I do this new thing, the best example that Keegan uses is juggling. Mm -hmm. So every person that joins Keegan's programs, mm. if they listen to him, they will start juggling balls. Mm. Yeah, you'll also be looked at like you're crazy. And this is the mm. best part about it. The great thing about juggling is that you can actually physically see these neural connections being made right in front of your hands. You take three balls, two throws and you drop it and you're like geez i don't know what i'm doing within five minutes if you're coordinated maybe it takes 30 minutes an hour you'll start getting a couple tosses mm. and so that's a physical representation that your brain is learning and now you take that flexibility of mind and you go oh wow everything is like this mm. oh wait i can be i can be a world-class reader just like I can be a world-class juggler. I can get really good at coaching people. Whatever it is that you want to do, you have this realization that my mind is flexible and if I just put the time in with the right ethic and the right form, everything will turn out as it should if you know what you want. So that's a little bit of mind flexibility and I found it immensely powerful. Even just the juggling, just to be able to make those connections. And then I can see it in myself, just looking at how I speak, how I write the goals that I'm setting for myself. Three months ago, I would have thought I was crazy to think that I could actually do some of the things that I'm thinking I could do. Mm -hmm. Just uh, just yesterday, these, these arrived. Awesome. I, I don't I've even been... have good good ones. Yeah, just... just uh... So also got a Rubik's cube around here. I haven't started playing with that, but yeah. What do you think about mind flex? 
it's funny because I, I've always used the word mindset. So I'm trying to get my mind flex around that word. Um, yeah, totally. And I think starting out as coaching something today, Max and I were on a, uh, a seminar today and it was about quality and quantity of movement. I think it was the topic, mm -hmm. but I thought here I am like before I would just study on my own with a book. I'm doing it my way. Didn't work with other people. So that was a mindset that was set in concrete that didn't allow me to grow. And I jump on a call now with people that are, I believe, much smarter than me. They have a lot more experience and I'm right there. And it's like, how can I be more open and just share from where I'm at and learn from the people that are in this group? I had, an, I had a wonderful time today. I'm going to attend all these seminars, these events, because it's, and I realized in that moment, it's like, wow, this is where my man, my mind starts to expand and, and listen to different people. Like I, before I was a uh, CrossFit, it's <laughs> really stupid. I mean, I just, that, that's a mindset, right? That's set in concrete. It's like, I'm not even going to look at that because I know some friends that got hurt and it's this, you know, this thing rather than being flexible, looking at it and seeing, seeing the good, you know, in it. Yeah. So I think that's, yeah, that's my take on mind flex. It's your um, perception. It's yeah. like your what you were just saying that reminds me of like this idea that your perception is just king. Like um, the story with Viktor Frankl. I don't know if you've heard mm, of yeah, his I have, book. Yeah, I read the book, yeah. I, I have not read his book yet, but I've, I good. know the idea. You could probably tell more about it. But it's basically the idea that, look, when your circumstances can't change, he was in a Nazi concentration camp you're forced to change yourself. And that's all about perception. It's all about being flexible in your mind, being able to look at your circumstances. And this is an extreme case. Like for most of us, we can actually create the circumstances that we want, but take someone who's paralyzed, take someone who's a slave, a real slave. Mm -hmm. That's the freedom. That's, this is the layer of freedom. Mm -hmm. So, I think there's financial freedom, like there's that freedom of not being a slave to your nine to five. There's that freedom where you can not necessarily sit on a beach and work on a laptop. It just means that you're doing what you want to do with your time and you're not answering to someone else's orders, really. Right. And that comes with having enough money to say, F you, like mm. I'm doing my own thing. Mm. That's a really cool part of freedom. And most people, I think, are afraid of pursuing that because it's unnatural and our minds aren't put in a place that could actually realize that that's possible. But as great as that could be, I think that's just a thin layer of freedom. Like, mm. I think there's a deeper underlying freedom that Viktor Frankl is talking about here, where it's regardless of how you feel how, how your circumstances are whether you're in surgery or you're literally dying whether you're starving even whether you're like really suffering you have the worst gut health and you're in so much pain there's actually a flick like a, a switch that you can flip mm. where you can perceive the world and actually enjoy your existence it's not necessarily that you're happy it just means that you have this like deep appreciation that you're alive. And to me, if you can get to that point, that's the ultimate freedom. It doesn't even matter if you die broke, right. if you if you don't do anything with your life and you should pursue things with your life. I won't tell you what to do, but like I don't yeah, I don't think that living a, a homeless life and doing nothing with your time is the best bet. And there's been like I don't know who that philosopher was. I don't know if you've ever heard of this guy where he like, he he got rid of every possession that he ever owned. Mm. Uh, I forget his name, but he mm. he was a beggar. He would just beg in the streets, right. but he was one of the wisest guys in the town. He was writing all the time and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But he had some level of freedom where he enjoyed his life without anything. That's a deeper mm. layer. I'm I'm curious what you think about that. I don't even know how I got onto that, but. 
freedom, right? Like, so having things, right? That's, a, that's something that I've, I've experienced lately. You're talking about this, this guy yeah. giving, giving away all of his things, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, I have more money now than I've, than I've ever had in my life. And I don't like, I mean, my almost 90% of my shirts are my, my, you know, trainer shirts I usually wear, you know, Adidas, you know, it's sort of my, my, my suit for work. Right. I don't have a suit. <laughs> I don't have a suit actually anymore. I used to have seven. I used to work as a, in a corporate job. I was a senior manager really? of, of a company. Yeah. I don't know how I got that position, but I, I did. Um, <laughs> but I had like seven suits. I was in my thirties. So I was, that's when I thought it was a hot shot. Got some cool, I got a cool watch and watches. Yeah. I did all these, did all these, all these things, but now my, so speaking of freedom, my, my money goes into learning and equipment for the gym. That's basically it. And almost all the money that I spend um, is on that. And I feel ah, food. <laughs> Sorry. Was that the timer? A, it was. Yeah. We got 10 minutes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's just a little okay. reminder. Um, it's fine. But yeah, just actually food. Um, and we have nice things. I mean, we're living in central Tokyo, so it's not a huge place. But I feel very free that way. I don't know if this mm -hmm. can, connects with what you were just saying, but yeah, it does. That's definitely. Um, I was a slave to what other people thought before, like, "Well, oh, coming to buy these suits, I, I'm like this. I'm an executive, and I don't need that. I want to be helpful. That's yeah. where my freedom comes from: helping. Um, you don't have to be a beggar. Like, if you like art, buy some cool artwork. Like. You don't have to have empty walls. My room is empty and mm -hmm. I, I don't even have anything on the walls, but like I took it to the extremes. Like I think I do most things. Mm. Um, <laughs> I graduated college 10 months ago and I started looking around my house and I was like, I started looking at my house like, uh, like my things were like scraps that like I would leave around the house. Mm -hmm. So when I entered a room, I could see, Oh, there's my scrap. I was I was here. And someone could tell that I was here. So my goal was to eliminate all the scraps in the mm. house, in the basement. I wanted to get everything in my room, everything that I owned aside from my car. I did it in a couple of months. I sold everything online. I own very little now. But I I wasn't some like collector or anything, but I got rid of a ton of my clothes, a ton of my objects. And it's not that one day I won't own things, but I'm so young that I was like, all these people have these houses where they, they buy these massive houses just to store all their stuff. And what is this stuff? Like, why do you need all your, why are you storing mm -hmm. your life's memories in your basement when you never even look at them? Like we have digital storage. Now you can take some pictures. There's, there's so many reasons that I think to, <laughs> to start selling your stuff or just give it away mm. and it frees you like it frees your mind you're not so it's just like cleaning your room but you do it for your whole life so your car is clean your room is clean and yeah you feel you don't have to abide to the minimalistic mm. you don't have to be a minimalist you don't have to own 10 things own what you value i think that's the key like what do you actually value if you value books have a library that's cool right. get a kindle then you don't even have to it's all it's all in this little i can't i don't like reading on the screens but i learn on screens all the wow, time wow so. you don't well i thought i thought your generation would just like that that why would you have a book you know oh, books I, are the best. I, yeah i just got over books i've I had lots of books and i just minimized down to it's okay this is it it's like cutting the coffee it's like it's mm. comfortable but it's just me but that's awesome Videos are great too. So yeah, I learned online. Right. Um, really good, Max. I think, um, so we hit on carnivore, we, we hit on freedom and slavery, carnivore yeah. diet, how that's helped in so many ways with time, with pain in your body. I had a, yeah. a serious spon spondylolisthesis. I yeah. think it's a spondyl. L5, right? Right. And I mean, I, of course, I don't have the evidence, but I may have been able to cure that in like two weeks with this. 
I'm almost sure of it by the, by the way my body sort of limbered up. I was doing, I don't really um, use foam rolling very much, but I do have a foam roller here and I was rolling different areas that used to be like, ah, and just like, just, I thought, is this, is this possible? Like there's no pain there at all. Um, but that's, wow. that is freedom. Like there's so many guys, pain. especially guys that are in their thirties, forties that are training through pain every day. And you see, you know, see people like holding their backs and you don't have to live that way. That's, that's slavery. No, you don't. don't be a slave to that. It's, it's minutes yeah, We haven't really talked about that freedom from pain. That's, that's a huge one. Ah, next podcast. Please join me 100%. again. Nance. All right. Uh, but yeah, just it's a way and it's, it's not, we're not saying it's the only way, but it's a way that we're both enjoying the carnivore diet. Um, just really change. I mean, I, I, I'm calling it the ultimate diet right now. Cause it, to me, it's the ultimate so far. Um, mm -hmm. And just the, the literature on it as well. Um, there, there's a lot to dive into. I think you'd mentioned Paul Saladino, the carnivore code, I think is the name of his book. Yeah. Um, who are some other guys? Dr. Sean Baker is another guy. He's a Sean doctor. Sean Baker. Um, he has another. He has a book as well. But yeah, lots of lots of good information um, there. Brian also, Sanders. Brian uh, Sanders. I've never heard of him. I think he's the guy that has the Food Lies uh, YouTube ah, channel. Okay. And his podcast Food Lies. is very very good. I've listened to a woman named Mary Ruddick on Food Lies. Okay. On his podcast, she's doing some really interesting work with like the tribes and uh, ah right, Aboriginal people. She's like debunking the blue zones myths and things okay. like that. So she's really going into these places and seeing what do these people actually eat, and they're not eating what these books are saying that they're oh, wow. eating. Awesome. So I'm actually I'm I think I'm gonna eventually try to get her on my podcast because yeah she's got a lot of very interesting stuff and she's not very well known yet so i'll look into it a lot of people uh dave o'brien that guy right right um dave o'brien he's a Australia. he's a fellow poliquin um right. student right. just like keegan just like ben and ex instead of diving into knees over toes he dove into gut health right so he read everything there is to know about gut health and he's actually coming out with this program he might be available now where it's like it analyzes your personal blood tests and then it puts it into this program and it spits out your exact diet that you need to heal. And awesome. it's, I don't, I mean, I don't know anything about it, but he seems very uh, respectable and honest. So sure. I don't would doubt that he, he's creating something like this, which if, if that is the case, he'll explode too, because mm. that's a problem that is, <laughs> that's 90% of people easily. So, right. Some, some crazy things ahead in the world of gut health, carnivore, optimal health. I mean, ultimate health. Awesome, Max. We have two minutes, so I want to get your, I want to get people to know where to contact you. So if you can give, uh, where can we find you, Max? Yeah. Instagram, Max H Freedom. H is for my last name or health. I don't really know. I just, it was the only username that worked and then <laughs> you uh youtube max freedom without the h those are really the main places i post my podcast on youtube and i'll be documenting my knees over toes journey on youtube as well awesome um yeah but instagram would be easy if you have questions send me a dm it's cool all right max is a guy that we can trust he's the real deal I young and wise it. enlightened um it's been great max thank yeah, you for it's been awesome thank you for i bringing always it. enjoy our conversations likewise all right dude see you around all right have a good one all right see you guys <laughs>